All right, so if you've signed up or signed in, one of the things that it asked you was, if you had created a brand new account, it asked you for a username or a, a full name and then a username. So I'll make a note here. Most networks have a full name and a username. A full name would be something like San Diego Continuing Education. So people get thrown off. Do I put my full name? And if you put your full name, that's fine. It can be changed. It doesn't matter. But the full name of the person or the business. Then we have a username. This is going to be something like at SDCE. So this full name is the full name of the business or person, and the username is that short name, the, the nickname, the, the, the address. The full name is not unique, and the username is unique. I can try to create a Twitter account right now and um, you know call it John Smith, John Smith Plumbing. And it'll let me, even though there's a John Smith Plumbing already in Iowa, and Idaho, and California. So the full name, it will let me do it, no problem. Question? For some reason, it got locked, and it asked me for my phone number to verify it. Oh, okay. Sometimes this happens, unfortunately. If we are creating an account, all of us at once, sometimes what happens, Twitter freaks out and asks, why are so many people creating an account at the same time in the same building? So some of us, it won't let us create the account until, you know, like 20 minutes later when it resets itself. So for the moment, you can just take notes, follow along, and then in a little while, it'll unlock itself so that you can proceed. So I didn't have to, I gave my phone number, they said they're contacting me with a code. So they should text you a code, because okay. that's what they did to me, and they text okay, me. Okay, but it can take 20 minutes. It can take a little bit, okay. so you you, you, want, okay. you might want to check your phone, you might get something back. But I see this very commonly, unfortunately. That's why I would like people to have the network already set up, because when we try to do it together, it often happens that the network thinks there's a there's a den of hackers in this room, because they're all trying to create an account at once. So that's Twitter's fault. So the full name of uh, an account is not unique, so I can create an account called uh, uh, John's Plumbing, and uh, there may already be 20 John's Plumbings on Twitter. That's fine. But then the, the problem comes when I then try to select the username on the next screen. So I'm trying to select, you know, at John's Plumbing. Plumbing. And it says, that name's already taken. We suggest John's Plumbing 2579. So the unique name is unique. No one else in the world can have that name if it's already taken. And Twitter has been around 10 years. So if you had a family business for 50 years, John's Pizza, and you just got the great idea to get on Twitter this year, John's Pizza was probably taken nine years ago. So you're going to have to settle for something like John's Pizza San Diego, or John's Pizza SD, or the... John's Pizza, something else, because that one is unique and only one person can actually have it. So you might have seen that as you were trying to set up your account. Uh, you might have figured it out or not, that's okay. And all of this stuff can be changed when we get to the settings in a moment. Username is also related to your URL or your web address. Username is often short with no spaces, can have numbers, uh, and usually an underscore. Numbers or underscore. So, no is Victor's Pizza. That is not a valid username. Do you also notice I'm adding this at symbol like an email address? That's not a valid username. Uh, yes is Victor's Pizza.
pizza or Victor's pizza or Victor's pizza or Victor's pizza 99. So no spaces in the username. You can't have spaces in the full name, not the username. This applies to Twitter. This applies to Instagram. This applies to Facebook. This applies to almost every network. There's a full name. There's a username. And you might have to settle for something else if someone already took it. And there is a limit, usually 15 characters or so. So I have a client who is a jeweler, and she sells very cool jewelry. But her, the name of her business is her full name, Jewelry. So when you try to, when she tried to create the, the name, her full name plus Jewelry didn't fit. It went over the 15, 15 characters. So she put her initials, Jewelry, and that one worked. So those sorts of things, again, on an individual basis is better to answer. Some people need to put a full name or put initials or put dashes or put numbers or something. But in general, that's the big idea with full names and usernames. I'm going to sign into this account and then show you a few things. So if you managed to create the account, uh, it might be very empty, there's no branding, graphics, whatever, there's no followers, etc. This is what we'll talk about in this class and future classes, um, setting up a profile, getting followers, being active. So goals, basic goals, yes? Some, something like that, yes. Uh, when you're creating that Twitter account and it's asking you for your interests, um, a lot of networks nowadays, they have this process where it kind of asks you about topics and interests. So selecting them will give you notifications on those things. We can turn them on and off a little later. But for the moment, it does ask you to select something. If you don't do that, the account is going to be like a ghost town. You're not going to see anything, and that won't be so valuable. Basicals of any social network, set up as completely as possible. The profile, or technically page, profile is a person, page is a business. Set up completely as possible the page, which is full name, full business name, username, your URL, your address to your profile, to your page, that is. About or bio information. About information. Links. Graphics. And we'll look at all, what all of this means in a moment. But almost on every network, you want to set this up. I want to put the full name of my business so that when people try to search, they might find me. I want to set a username. I want to claim the address. Some networks, when you create the account, you're going to get something that looks like this. This is very common in Facebook. You're going to get an address that looks like facebook.com pages slash Victor's Bakery dash gibberish. This is very common for you to get in Facebook as soon as you set it up. I don't want that. I want facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. One is more visually readable. One fits on a business card. One looks professional. The other one is just the generic, welcome to Facebook, here's your address. 
Same thing with Twitter, depending on your username. If my username is victors underscore pizza 99, my URL, my address will be twitter.com slash victors underscore pizza 99. These things can be changed, can be edited. So the default might not be a very good address. One thing you want to set up if you're able to, to claim your username, to claim your unique address. I am Victor's Pizza, but there's a Victor's Pizza in New York. I want to claim Victor's Pizza on Twitter or Facebook or Snapchat so that I have it, so the traffic comes to me, not my competitor. We'll see about this about information in a moment as well. What is the business about? Writing, you know, what, what are your hours of operation? What do you sell? Writing in terms of marketing speak, which I'll get to and show examples in a moment. Oftentimes these networks will let you fill in more links. From your Twitter, where might you also want to direct your customers? Website. Your website your other Facebook and such, like your website. So you might want to uh, bring people from your Twitter to your website, because that's where I'm going to sell you my product, or that's where you can sign up for the newsletter. And graphics, so icon, and header image. Uh, I'll show my example in a moment, but you have a space in almost all of these networks to create a small circular or square icon about your business. Because if anyone can claim the full name, it's not unique. What will differentiate you from the competition is your logo. So your icon or logo you need to set, and most will have a header image, a big graphic that catches people's attention. Part of these goals also is um, reconnaissance. I don't have spell check on this. Reconnaissance, something like that. Who knows how it's spelled? Recon. Reconnaissance. You want to see other people's accounts. So recon. Check out example accounts of competitors to see what they've done. And this will be a deeper discussion later to do competitor analysis or reconnaissance to see what they've done. Uh, you're obviously not stealing anything. You're looking insp get to get inspiration to see the competition, perhaps about how often do they tweet? What kinds of pictures do they post on Facebook? How do they use their Snapchat? You're not going to steal exactly what they're doing. You're going to see what they're doing and get an idea for you to do it your own way to be unique. You're going to see that Oh, a lot of these restaurants, and I'm a restaurant, they have a big picture of a plate of food in the header image. And on mine, I've got a picture of the restaurant. So maybe that's, an in, that's one reason why I'm not getting a lot of followers or traffic. It's on a case-by-case -case basis, of course, but competitor analysis, a.k.a. reconnaissance, is something that we need to do with online marketing. Coca-Cola sees what Pepsi-Cola does and vice versa. And, you know, Dasani Water sees what Avion Water does and vice versa. And Ford sees what Chevy does and vice versa. So uh, it's part of the business. Check the competition, and if you get a great idea, eventually someone's going to copy your great idea and vice versa. And it's okay. It's just the nature of it. So, thinking on, in those terms, notice if you'd like to see this on your browser, if you go to twitter.com slash vmcink, you can see an example of one of the companies I'm involved with. This company has that unique address. No one else can claim it. This is the username. On almost every other social network for this business, it has the same username. Facebook.com slash VMC Inc. Instagram.com 
slash BMC Inc. There's that consistency in the brand. But it often happens, depending on the popularity or the age of a network, the name that I wanted got taken by someone else. And if they are using it, they, they, they don't have to be that business, but if they're using it, you can't take it from them. Someone else claimed it, they got it, you can't really take it. The only people that can take a name back basically are celebrities and companies, big companies that can afford it and all that, us little people. You know, if someone claimed Victor's Pizza and they haven't used it in two years, I still can't really take it from them. These networks don't have much of an incentive to release an unused name to us little people. But, oh, Jim Carrey got the name. So if you're big, you have that pull. But for us little people, you want to claim your name. So this, this is the username, this is this account. It's got the logo, like I said. You, uh, Twitter uses a circular logo. So if you've got a logo that is a square, uh, that is a rectangle, either wide or tall, it'll be cropped. It'll look weird and unprofessional. Um, let's say your logo is wide. You have to have some knowledge of how to resize your logo so that it fits in a circular shape. You have to ask someone that knows how to use Photoshop or you have to use some graphic software, but it will cut it off. Even if your logo is officially wide, you have to use Photoshop or something to add a little bit of padding so that it fits in that space. You have a big wide graphic at the top that you can use as, a, as, a, as any kind of graphic. I'll show other examples in a moment. Yes? Yeah, this background header. When you're logged into your account, there's going to be a button somewhere to edit profile. Right. I'll get to that in a moment, but when you edit that, then you'll be able to upload your graphic. So this account, the full name is vmcinc.net, which is also the address. vmcinc.net is a valid address online. So this is the full name. The username is vmcinc without the .net. It would be fine to have the net part or not. But this is the nice and short six characters. That's the full name. You know, UCSD. They have their full name, University of California, San Diego. But they have at UCSD. So they can be different. CNN. There says CNN. And then at CNN. So some businesses. Some organizations can have the same exact same username and full name, and that's fine. But this is the unique one that no one else can have. There's a part for a biography. So what this business is about. Social media, it's about web design, it's about finance, keep up to date. I'll show you how to edit this in a moment, but these are keywords that people might search for. People might do a Google search. People might search inside of Twitter. They're searching certain keywords. I need some financial advice. This account has the keyword finance, which may help it get found. And we will see over and over on these networks the importance of search, how people find you. Twitter has also a way for you to add a location, your link back to your website something called Vine, which you don't have to worry about anymore because they shut it down, how long the account has been around, how many photos, and so forth. So this is an example of an account. Let's look at another one. Twitter.com slash SDCE. So our college here. They have the logo here in the little circle. They use the top graphic over here to show a student and also text. That has to be accomplished via a graphic software. That has to be Photoshop or Illustrator or Microsoft Paint or something. This You have to design it in some software or some app. I will let you know at least this website, Pixlr. 
pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com. This is a free online graphics editor. It's like Photoshop Junior. It will let you crop a graphic, add text, rotate something, add a cool filter for free. Uh, it just runs in the website. You just go to the website, you go to the web app and, and do it. There's also a mobile version if you want that. But this web app version has been around a long time. I feel like I've known about this site for at least 10 years. So pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R. I'll also put it in the notes. Remember all of these notes that I'm talking about? I'll put into the folder a little later. Free online graphics editor. Pixlr.com can be used to create or edit any kind of graphic. So if you want to do what our college did in that it created that top header image and it put text on the side and then it put the student on the left, you need a graphics software. Does anyone have any experience in Photoshop? This class, a couple of people. We teach classes in Photoshop here. So if you want to become a you know a photo manipulation expert, you can take our classes, or you can dabble with Pixlr.com for free. So free classes and career training. Sign up for orientation. So this stands out right away. What the business is about. There's a student working with networking hardware, telling you we've got career training. There's the logo, there's the website, there's the username, full name, there's the biography. SDCE is the adult education institution within the San Diego Community College, offers thousands of free classes and 40 more or more career training programs. So again, people might be searching for San Diego training programs. Those keywords that in, in the biography could help me get found. So this is not just a fun type of bio about, you know, putting a joke here or something. This is to help you also get found. This is why I put it in the to-do list here about information. Use it as another self-promotion tactic write sentences with keywords about your business to help you get found. When people search on Google or Yahoo or Bing or Twitter, I'm looking for a plumber. I might go to Twitter and, and search for San Diego plumber. If I've got the keyword San Diego Plumber somewhere in my biography, that could help me get found. Back to your website, for example, a link back to your website where you have your store, your online store. These networks are changing and experimenting all the time. Uh, Facebook uh, is starting to add the feature uh, to be able to sell products through Facebook. Uh, Twitter doesn't really have that yet, but most networks, you're going to still need to drive people back to your website where you have your catalog, where you have your, your payment system to collect credit cards. The college's Twitter account talks about all of these great classes but they still have a link back to sdce.edu so that you can actually register for the class or read more. Um, so, okay, so San Diego Continuing Ed, like every profile, you'll see these stats. They've tweeted 1,763 times. They are following 386 accounts, and they have 691 followers. Every network has a variation on those keywords. So we'll say content, 
can say followers. Yeah, followers. Let's say following. Let's say followers. The likes. Content. On Twitter, it's a tweet. On Snapchat, it's a snap. On um, Facebook and um, Google Plus, it's it's a post. Different names for the same thing. The picture you showed, the movie clip, the text link or article. Different names, same thing. The content you're sharing, like in the real world, that's the uh, that's the billboard, the radio ad, the newspaper ad, the content. Twitter. Um, all of these basically, all of these basically have the same term of following. Who are you following? On Twitter, I have subscribed to, or I am paying attention to, my account is paying attention, is following another account. Same thing on Snapchat. On Snapchat, I'm following, I'm paying attention to, I'm subscribed to this other account. Following. Twitter is also followers. Snapchat is followers. Some of these other networks, um, YouTube calls it subscribers. Different names for the same thing. These are the people paying attention to you. This is your captive audience. If my business is all about home improvement, I want to have followers that care about home improvement. I want to have do-it-yourselfers. I want to have, uh, I don't know, car, uh, ho uh, house flippers. I want to have people that pay that, that care about my business. I want those followers. Simply having a thousand followers is not great if most of them are not going to be legitimate in that they follow you to buy what you're selling. Followers. Your captive audience paying attention to you. following who you pay attention to or subscribe to content what you share text video audio links whatever and likes so Twitter uh, they used to be called favorites now they're likes um, Snapchat has hearts. Uh, Facebook traditionally for a long for a long time had that thumbs up, right? That like, the thumbs up. Now you have a bunch of these other reactions on Facebook. What what other reactions besides a thumbs up do you have on Facebook? A little mad face. The different emojis. There's hearts also. There's, isn't there like a little surprised face, the wow face? So you have these reactions, likes, reactions, hearts, favorites, whatever it's called, this shows, shows enjoyment. I enjoyed that post you made on LinkedIn, so I'll give it a like. It was useful to me. Your customers enjoyed that coupon that you tweeted, so they gave it a like. Likes are, these are, a variation of conversions. Your content leads to impressions. I can tweet all day long, I can snap all day long, there's going to be some impressions. So people are going to see them those that pay attention and do something about it, do a like, a reply, and we'll talk about these other actions in a moment. But um, 
th this is one form of, of checking conversions. I tweeted something and I got five likes. I had some success. You can then divide those number of likes based on the number of followers. You can get a, a ratio. And again, it's usually going to be slow. I mean, low. But the network will also tell you in a different screen. Yes? No? Okay. So this other screen will will also tell you what these what these values are, these analytics. Make a note of it at the moment, and we'll look at it later. Uh, Twitter's um, stats screen is analytics.twitter.com. You be, you'll be able to get to that uh, via a link in the menu somewhere. But that address right there is where you can go check your stats. I tweeted five times. Three of them got 20 likes. This one didn't get any likes. I tweeted this whole week, and Tuesday was the most popular day. Friday at 1 p.m. was the least most popular time. This topic was the most effective. Because people always ask me, and I'm surprised no one has asked yet. I think you're all very, very um, kind and don't want to interrupt me. Thank you. It's okay. Raise your hand and ask questions. But people often ask, what's the best time of day to tweet? Or what time on Facebook should I be posting? I've read articles that say make sure every Monday morning at 7 o'clock you share something. Um, that answer is right and wrong. The, uh, the right answer is really based on your business, your demographics, your product, based on you. So the answer of when should I be tweeting, you will get that answer in your analytics screen. <coughs> as you use these networks, as you try it out, I'm going to try every Monday morning to share something. Every Wednesday yeah. night, I'm going to share something. As you try this and stats build up, you will see that Saturday afternoon is the wow. best time for you to share. Wow. Yes, you'll find plenty of articles out there that will tell you. Make sure every Monday morning, 7 a.m. on Facebook you post, because everyone's at work in, on Facebook instead of working. <laughs> well, sure, but those for the people that are working at a 9 to 5 job in an office, mm -hmm. looking at Facebook in one window and doing their job in another. My audience doesn't go to the office. My audience, you know, I'm a nonprofit organization where I'm trying to gain followers and volunteers, and they're not at these 9 to 5 jobs, so 7 a.m. is not going to work for them. My audience reacts better on a Tuesday afternoon, 3 p.m., and you will know that as you use your networks and you check your stats. Use the networks as often as you can in the beginning to build data that you'll use to cater or target your future efforts. Facebook gives you this. All the networks give you this. All the networks give you some sort of stats screen, and they call it different things. Some call it insights, some call it analytics, some call it different names. So. Have any of you heard of uh, the big famous one, Google Analytics? Google Analytics is also that sort of thing. That one will give you your stats about your website traffic. What day of the week did my website get the most traffic? What, what city did I get the most traffic from? And this is one of the most powerful reasons why, web, why marketing 2.0, why digital marketing beats traditional marketing. You can get exact details about the people the right demographics to market them at the right time, with the right message, with the right effort. In the real world, the best a person can do, a company can do, is put their TV ad on the right channel at the right time, and they're not guaranteed that the right person will really see it. But in these social networks, we will be able to know exactly what who the people are and what they care about and target to them, and we can directly market to direct people hey, you might be interested in this. Check out this coupon. So these are examples of different accounts. And then we've got um, your own account over here on the top right corner. So wherever you're at, on the top right corner, mine has the icon of the business. Yours might just have a little generic icon. 
on the top right corner. If, you've, if you're here, try to click on it, and then let's click on Profile. This should take you back to your profile, which might be completely empty, but on this one there's stuff. And this is where you can edit the profile. We'll take a quick look at Edit Profile, because again, this is going to be different for everyone. On the one-on-one, -on -one, we can talk a little bit more. But when you go back to your profile, that icon on the top right corner is always visible. You want to go to your profile and click Edit Profile. Even if you've already set this up before, it might be a good idea to look at it again. If you've set this up a while ago, all of these networks change every once in a while. So it's good to kind of refresh yourself in the account under Edit Profile. Here's a spot where I can click to upload a photo. Let's say, you know, I created the account right now. I don't have the photo to use. You know, I need to take the photo of the business and upload it, or I need to... I uh, get my graphic designer to give me the graphic to put it there. I need this wide rectangular graphic. You can check the competition to see how to see what people put there. Checking the competition is via search, which we'll talk a little bit later. There's a spot for a full name that can be anything. There is a limit to how much you can write. The username can be changed elsewhere because it's a little bit more important to claim that and keep it because someone else might take it and you may have a hard time getting it back. So to change the username is going to be elsewhere in the settings, in the settings of the account. We'll look at it later. And from this screen you've got the biography where you can write there is a limit to how much. It'll tell you when you've gone over the edge. But when you write too much, you're out of space. You can't write a whole essay right there. But you want to put there what is valuable about your business, the various keywords, complete sentences, what is your business about. We have also probably a location. We have a location that you can fill in. Question? Yeah, um, I see on Twitter that a lot of people are using hashtags. To, yes. Is that keywords? I mean, you using a hashtag to say what you're using a hashtag for their description instead of your full sentences? When we talk about hashtags and a little bit of what they are and how to use them, we can then circle back to using them in the biography. But if they make sense for you to use, you can use them there as well. So once we talk about what hashtags are, It'll make sense about why we might want to use them in the biography. Uh, you've got a spot for an address. Again, Vine. Well, Vine was this really fun network uh, that Twitter owned that you could create short little videos, six second long videos. And it was perfect for our short attention span culture, where you make this short little video six seconds long to catch people's attention. And it was popular, it had millions of users, and I know for myself I had like thousands of views on my Vine, then they shut it down at the beginning of this year. So this is the transitory nature of all this tech stuff. Uh, Twitter had that system, it seemed to work out, but they shut it down for various reasons. So if you have this Vine profile, you can ignore it, you can turn it on, it doesn't matter, it doesn't even exist. Yes? So what happens to your Vine uh, videos that you've developed? Do you, so, do you own them still? Supposedly, they're still on the Vine server, so you can, people can still see them. And they were giving everyone ample notice, supposedly, that you can download it all to, to keep it yourself. But yeah, there were your videos. You could still download them, but the service is just now defunct. And then you can re-upload those to like YouTube? Yeah. You t uh, Twitter also has this other service that uh, is becoming popular online called Live. There's Facebook Live, Twitter Live, YouTube Live, which is basically I'm going to turn on the camera on my phone and interact with my, with my followers live. I'm going to talk to the uh, 
customers, friends and family. I'm going to show the product live. That's for a deeper discussion later. I am going to talk about it later on the day in the future because that's a big discussion about video and live video and how does it work, why would I use it. But Twitter has this live platform called Periscope. Um, Facebook has their version, YouTube has their version, and it's becoming more of a hot thing to broadcast live. You have some basic editing choices of color, or if you've got your color formula, you can put it in. That's a big answer about how to get your color formula. Don't worry about it at the moment. Uh, but here is color choices and birthday optional for a business. You can put your founding day or whatever, but be careful. You have to be at least 13 years old to use Twitter. So if you started your business last year, and you put it as last year, it'll say, why is a one-year-old using Twitter? So I would just not even fill it in for a business. Yes? On the color thing, what is it impact? It affects the colors of these links and other, like, accent colors. See how these links are all that color? So you don't have a lot of design um, options in most of these networks. You can change some basic colors here and there. You have a spot for your logo and a header, but you can't really change how your columns look, or you can't add extra widgets to the site. It's just going to be some basic editing like that. So see now all of the highlight colors are that green. Okay, so let's break down each of these ideas, content following, etc. So every network has some sort of content. Content ideas. Text, link, video, audio, and now the newer one, live. So people always ask, okay, uh, how should I use Twitter? What should I tweet? What do I put on Facebook? That's the question that's hard to ask to answer for the whole class. I can talk in generalities, and I can talk one-on-one. -on -one. But we have these various things that we could share, this various content. So instead of trying to give the best answer for everyone, let me show you this. Content ideas are plentiful at this website, socialmediaexaminer.com. We'll look at it briefly in a moment. There's many websites out there of ideas of how to use these networks. I could tell you, every Tuesday, do live video on a product unboxing. And that is going to only apply to two people in the class. Everyone's going to say, what's an unboxing? Why would I go live? Blah, blah, blah. So go to the, a website like Social Media Examiner and other industry journal websites to keep up to date with the latest trends in social media and to get so many great tutorials and articles about ideas for your particular niche. I can go there and look up how should I use Facebook if I'm a lawyer? What should I tweet if I'm a plumber? And there'll be plenty of articles from pl plenty of talented and real-world people that will give you advice on how to use these networks for your use case scenario. So a text tweet or a text post on Facebook or a text post on uh, Instagram is text. Some advice, missive, joke, inspiration that you share to the networks. A link. Web address back to your website or someone else's. It's perfectly fine to um, share a link to someone else's website. Uh, people ask about, uh, well, copyrights and uh, do I have to give them credit and do I have to ask? We're, we're still in the wild west of social media. Uh, where sharing someone's photo could be permissible 
their link and all of that. It's a deeper discussion that we'll touch on as we go through the course, these three months and such. But most of the time, it's okay to share someone else's link or photo and such if they also put it on their social networks or online, because it's a form of free advertising. I'm not saying that if a painter uploaded their photo to their website that they're selling, and then you borrowed their photo as part of your marketing campaign. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that if I want to give some free advertising to my friend or someone else, I can link to their website or show their picture on my Twitter, and that is not the same as stealing someone else's copyrighted material to use as a marketing tool. It's a tricky subject, again, like I said, and we're going to talk about it as a class goes on. But I would love it if my friend, who has a thousand followers, promoted me. I've only got two followers, and they have two thousand. So if they tweeted a picture of my photo, I would love that. Free advertising. But not everyone would. If someone else doesn't want that link, they may contact you to take it down. Best case scenario, worst case scenario, here come the lawyers. So it's a big big topic that we'll get through. This is original or repurposed, short or long <coughs> videos. We'll have a two-day, a two-meeting lecture on YouTube eventually, either in part two or part three, because really the only way to use YouTube, you can't really put text in YouTube. You can't put links in YouTube or audio and such. You have to put video on YouTube. You have to upload videos on YouTube. On every other network, for your business, I'm a plumber, I'm a lawyer, whatever, I can put text content, link content, and audio content, but on YouTube you have to put video content. So in this class, I spend one day, one lecture, where we talk about video creation and editing. We will create a video together, and I'll show you some basic video editing. The following week, then we will create the YouTube account and see what we need to do to get our video out there, get views, get subscribers, etc. So when I say you can share t video to Twitter, you could simply turn on your, your phone's camera and record a little panorama of the business and upload it. That's valid. You can turn it around and talk to the camera and then give the top 10 advice for baking a great cake and uploading that. You could use video in any kind of way on most of these networks. And we'll get the specific ideas as we go on. But again, this website will give you lots of specific ideas depending on your business for you to succeed. Audio. So this can often be in the form of podcasts, audio books, lectures, etc. What are podcasts? By now, everyone should have at least heard of the term. Podcasts have been around a while. But a podcast is an on-demand radio show, basically, online. A radio show in the real world, I have to tune into the radio at a specific time. Oops, I missed the morning zoo crew. It's already 11. They, they finished at 10. So I didn't, I didn't hear it. Traditional radio, you tune in at the right time, at the right station, you hear it. Podcasts are... You download the episode, or it's automatically downloaded to your device, and you hear it whenever you want. And that's a bunch of setup and a bunch of effort, um, which I believe we will also have one day of bigger coverage later on in part three. But is there a certain time they have to record the, the, uh, the podcast in order for it to be available? No, a podcast you can record it at any time of the day, upload it whenever you want, and then your followers or subscribers will get it automatically and then listen to it whenever they want. And then live. So, uh, you know, Q and A sessions, <clears throat> behind the scenes, some very quick general ideas here. Uh, I've got, let's say, fictional business, Victor's Bakery. Now, the purpose of Victor's Bakery is to sell cupcakes or birthday cakes, whatever. So I'm going to use all of these social networks to reach an audience to uh, 
to sell them cupcakes, whatever. So I could turn on the live broadcasting button on Twitter and talk to my followers and then tell them about our organic ingredients and the, the, you know, the, the tradition of excellence that we have in our baking and answer questions and all of that is a commercial, an infomercial to communicate with people to get them to buy my product or subscribe to my business or donate to the nonprofit or, or, or volunteer their time. Yes. All of these will be basically via a tweet, yes. I'm going to click the button to, to publish a tweet, and then I will attach these things to the tweet. So all of these are shared. Yes. You need to go over to your settings, and then down at the very, very bottom there will be a button there that says delete account. Settings are over under your icon over here, and then you'll have settings. Yeah, we'll, we'll check that out a little bit better. You might have to retrieve it or delete it or start over or whatever, but we'll check on the break. All of this content stuff is shared via tweet. Yes? So, the video and live, what's the most different for the the big difference in the goal is the video one over here, this is video that is complete. It's ready. I've already added music or I've added text. It's, it's been edited and it's ready. Live video is live. I turn it on. I fall down. It's in the video. I make a mistake. It's in the video. I can't go back and edit it. So both of them have a purpose. This is very spontaneous. This gets people to... To, to subscribe to you and pay attention because you're going to do something live only at a certain time. Whereas the, these pre-made video ones, they can, uh, you know, it's a little bit more professional. They can come back to it, share it a little bit easier. Usually it's shorter. I'm going to make a video of two minutes that has a specific goal. But these live things can go on for 10 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour. And it's just meandering different things. Can we record live? What, what you're doing on the live here will be automatically recorded, and a person can go back and watch it again. And they can fast forward and rewind, but you can't edit it to remove the part where you made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Yes? So, yeah, Google, Google Plus has Google Hangouts, yeah, you know, so different names. Different names for the same sort of thing. I think the thing about the Google Hangouts is that you can have like 10 people connected at once, 10 people doing a video at the same time. Twitter is only one person, and they've all got their variations. But this live aspect of these networks is becoming more and more uh, interesting and useful. We have a few things to think about here. Um, actually how to do this. We'll get to it in a moment. Let's take our second break in a moment. Any question? Any more questions at this point? It's just about, uh, okay, it's 11.50-ish. Let's take a break until 12. When we come back at 12, we'll do some more hands-on. Okay.